Good morning, boys and girls. I bring you greetings from Community Action Program, working at Murder Grove A Classroom. Well, my students know me by Miss Brown. Um, so in today, our story we're going to be reading is called When the Monkeys Came Back. Thank you for tuning in. Please share. Please um, tag your kids. Let them know that I'm here so that I could be able to come back and respond to them. So definitely have them tune in. Well, you know, the beginning of our book, they have learned that this is our cover. This is the back. And this is the spine. They know from the spine, it holds our pages together. Our title is called When the Monkeys Came Back. The author who wrote the story is Christine L. Franklin. The illustrator who draw the pictures is called Robert Ruth. Or Roth. This is our title page. It also again says when the monkeys came back. It also has your author again, Christine L. Franklin, and your illustrator, Robert Ruth. It's our story. What do you think, boys and girls, our story will be about? It seems that it'll be about monkeys in the places where they live, possibly in a jungle. Maybe you might find them even in a zoo. You definitely might find them in some trees if you go inside of a rainforest. So let's see what our story is about today. One of our main characters in the story is going to be Dormantas. When, Dormar when Dormato was a very little girl, the valley was a peaceful place. Children giggle as they chase each other between rows of tall corn. Fathers, fathers whistled as they dug in the ground. Mothers hum softly as they wrap black beans and cornmeal in banana leaves to cook. So if a father whistles, he might say, and a mother might hum as they're cooking. There was one old roll in the valley, but it was an ox cart roll. An ox cart road is the type of road that it doesn't allow cars on it. It just only allows a road to be able to bring in different things. Um, one place for meeting friends and cousins. It's a nice place for walking, a sunny place for catching lizards. There weren't any cars at all. The valley was a quiet place, except when the monkeys call. Every morning and every evening, as long as anyone could remember, the monkeys announced the changing of the night and the changing of the day. At dawn, they will howl and bark at one another, and the noises that were made were like thunder in the trees, and the dust will be the hooting and the scream. So they will scream at night, and they will thunder in the morning, and each leaf and the blaze of the grass would tremble from the sound. One day, a car chug spluttered up on the old road. After that, more cars came, not many at first, for the road was a ox road, not a car road. Marta was afraid of cars. And she might have been afraid of cars because she never seen cars on that road. And there might be things like that we might be afraid of, especially right now with this transition. But we're going to be okay. The sound and the smell made her hide behind her mother's skirt. She used her mother for protection. More and more cars came and trucks and more noises. Before long, it wasn't safe to walk down the middle of the road, to stand and talk, to chase and quicken the lizards. There came a change. There came a change. Like we're going through now, there is a change. But she using her parents for her protection. Still, the monkey shouted from the trees, drowning out all the new noises for a moment. Each day hooting, one day as they always had, Walking up in the waking up in the world and mourning, calling to the workers, calling to the workers home from the fields at night. The rain came and went. Martha's dress grew too short, and one day some men from the city came to Martha's house. They offered her father a lot of money, enough to buy six cows and bread and a brand new dress for Marta, and asked to cut down some trees on the side of the mountains. 
Martha's father agreed, and from that day on, the forest began to disappear. So with the forest disappearing, we got to see what happened to our monkeys. Because you remember, our monkeys lived in the forest. So let's see what happened. At first, it was just a few trees. Then the lumber cut down only the biggest trees and the ones with the hanging vines. The monkeys didn't seem to mind. They howled and they barked and they scolded just as before. But five years later, five years later, like one, two, three, four, five, there when there were only 24 trees left, in the forest, the monkeys went away. So how do you think Martha's might have felt? Those were her friends to her. So now that the monkeys were gone, let's see, it might have possibly made her feel sad. Martha didn't know where the monkeys went. One night, just as the sun slipped behind the hills and the monkeys screeded and hooted and cried loud than ever before. Some said it was because of the full moon. Others said the rain season was near, but the next morning, the valley was as silent as a stone. Over the next several years, the last of the trees was cut down. What had once been a forest was now covered with stumps and tangled bushes. There were a few birds, but no monkeys. Most people forgot about the monkeys, they had roosters to wake them in the morning, lamps to put them to lamps to work at night, but Martha didn't forget. So we gotta see what happened to the monkeys. As you can see, the only thing left are our birds, and these are called exotic birds. They're different kinds of birds. You also have frogs on the page. Now she's 15 years old. She grew up really fast. Martha married Emilio at 15 years old. That's a young number, but back then it was okay. Emilio worked for Martha's father, and when he died, they left him a farm to Martha and Emilio. You have a lot of land now, said Martha one day. I would like to have some for myself. Emilio laughed out loud. Because of those days, women didn't own land. Soon, we will have a family to feed, said Emilio. After I plant corn and beans and squash, there will be nothing left over to give you. The rest of the land belongs to the cows. And what do you think a cow sound would be? Maybe moo? That's a cow sound. So he wanted to give her any of the land because back then, women wasn't allowed to own the land. It was only left to the husbands because the women worked inside, the women worked, I mean, the women worked inside and the husbands worked outside. So she wasn't supposed to have any land. But he eventually said, hmm, I'll give you some land because she asked for the land about the land on the other side of the mountain. And on the other side of the mountain, he couldn't grow any leaves, he couldn't grow any corn, and he had a custom to not being able to make anything on that side that could grow because of the stumps. So Martha's asked for that land. That's true, Emilio agreed, and though it went against the custom, he gave the land on the other side of the mountain to Martha. So what do you think she's going to do with it? Let's see. What are you going to do with it, he asked her. I'm going to bring back the forest, said Martha, and that is what she did. So you know on your calendar this week, you have been talking about nature outside. You've been planting gardens. You have been planting seeds and building trees probably yourself. So now your mom can build us a tree and talk about more nature stuff as far as even with our insect song. Martha planted trees from the roots of the mountains, as far as up the hill she could climb. When the sun barked and the ground of the grass was dry, she hauled buckets of water to the trees. When the hard rain washed the little trees from the soil, she gently replanted them. So you have to be consistent. 
You have to make sure if you're going to plant something, you got to really be consistent. If it needs water, you got to give it water. If it gets washed out, you got to replant it. Year after year, Martha cared for the trees. And in the next 15 years, she gave birth to 11 children. Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven children. All of those kids were Miss Martha's. And every child learned to plant and tend to the trees. Year after year, Martha's children grew tall and so, be, so did the trees. Coffee grows well in the mountains, and millions would tease her. Maybe you could plant coffee on your land, but Martha didn't listen. She didn't change her mind, and the forest came back. So though he talked about her, she was consistent. She said, I'm going to grow these trees because I'm looking for something to come back. Many more years passed, and the trees grew higher and higher. Martha's children grew up and had children of their own. Emilio died, and he left the farm to Martha and her sons. One day, old Martha's took a, long, took a walk along the road in the warm sunshine. The children greeted her as she passed. Good morning, tree lady, they said. Good morning, answered Martha's with a wink and an old, old smile. She leaned on her sticks and stared across the valley. Her trees touched the sky. Thick vines wrapped around the trunks. Birds of every color filled the branches. Now wherever they dropped their seeds, new trees were growing. The valley was bright with squash and corn and bees and beans. But the side of the mountain was deep, dark green, forest green. Dormata's work was finished. And as you can see, our exotic birds, they came back again. Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve birds hanging out in the forest. And you can see there was a iguana and even a couple of frogs. One night, Darmata couldn't sleep. As she lay in her bed, she listened to the sounds of the insects and the, twirl and the twirling of the night birds. Out of the little window, she watched the stars trail across the black sky. She watched the moon shadows shift and change in her room. As dawn approached, she heard the roosters begin to crow. And then she heard another sound. So what do you think that sound is? Ooh, I wonder. At first, it sounded like barking of dogs. Remember in the beginning of my story? Something barked. But soon, the barking turned into a howl. <gasps> Screech! Then to the sounds of a shout. And every leaf and every blade in the grass trembled in the sound. Darmatas hobbled to the window and leaned out. In the dark air with the thunder, some of the monkeys hooting and howling and screaming from the treetops, waking up the whole world once again. Dormata closed her eyes. She smiled and she winked. And she winked a smile and listened to the music. And she missed that she had missed for 56 years. Wow, that was a long time for her to have to plan it and wait for the monkeys to come back. But they return every morning now. Old Dormatas wake up to the barking of the monkeys, the scolding of the monkeys. Every evening, she waits for them to gather and scream and howl and say goodnight. For a few moments, each morning and evening, the sounds of the monkeys draw out all of the sound in the valley. And for a few moments, each day, it was as if nothing had ever changed.
the end. So eventually, boys and girls, we will make it back to school and nothing will change. It will be back to normal. But you definitely thank y'all for tuning in with us. And we want y'all to tune in again with us next Monday for our story time at 10 a.m. Have your parents to make sure you come back and listen where it will be someone else reading us a different story. Moms and parents, uh, moms and dads, definitely have them to talk to you about the story. Draw me a picture, post it on the Facebook page to let us know that you tuned it in and that you were listening. Once again, our story was called When the Monkeys Came Back by Christine L. Franklin and illustrated by Robert Ruth. We definitely want to see you back next week, Monday at 10 a.m. Thank you.